Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing. Provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns, the ways of God. It says it will weary every one of them. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Now, there are sincere men and women of God who love Jesus with all their hearts. But they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work. To command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity. There are many people whose assignments are influence dependent. And yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you. It is dangerous to understand your assignment but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective. Are we together? Yes. In this kingdom, please write, in this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. In this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. When you know the ways of God, or you may call it the patterns, the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire, then you are ready to command authentic results. That in this kingdom, authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God. I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully. Action in ignorance is not faith action in ignorance is not faith respectfully speaking there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action action is the later part of faith the foundation of bible faith is revelation knowledge if you act in ignorance for instance back to my mic example Let's assume that I'm now given the mandate to switch this mic on. I can play with it around. Sincerely so. I can knock the mic. I can jump around it. I'm taking action but it's in ignorance. None of those actions will bring it, will switch it on. So if I, before you take action, you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge. Let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ. Please look up. You can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take. For instance, let's use a general example. A person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons. You can honestly ask them, not for mockery, but just to help. So what have you done about this situation? The first thing they will tell you is, I've done everything I know how to do. And that's the truth. But what did you do? They will say, I prayed. They will say, I fasted. Not wrong. But the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two. Are we together now? And you tell them, what else? They say, I begged an uncle, a wicked man who has all the money to solve this my problem he did not give me. What else did you do? I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work. Now, mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now. This student will barely pass that exam. Because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy, the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially. 
So if you want to help this man, the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business. You've only recycled another pain. Are we together now? If you really want to help this man, you have to go back to Isaiah 61 to preach the gospel to the poor. It will look like an insult. Does the poor need help or need preaching? So you now begin to give this person a new orientation. Hallelujah. A family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of, you know, their spiritual liberty. Everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes. You ask them, what have you done about it? Sincerely, they will most likely answer this way. I've gone to every prayer house. They will even list it. I've met this man of God. In fact, here is the photo. He snapped with me to tell you that I, I, I really met him. So why has the situation not changed? Do I know? How do you help this man now? Every time he or she is studying their Bible, they will find it written here that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And their experience cannot change this reality. No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So for that person, the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change, it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based. Are we together? I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Faith in ignorance, underline the word ignorance. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will, I mean action, my apologies. Action in ignorance, action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. That means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation, not action. The first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation knowledge. What kind of knowledge? A thorough understanding, I wrote here, of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. A thorough understanding of the patterns. A thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes. Once upon a time in my life, I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power. Why? Because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power. I have taught you here. Please look up. When you read the book of Revelations, the Bible says, Worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that. Uh, or he said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He's worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And then he said, I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb. As though had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Notice, seven horns and seven eyes. The eyes there talks of revelation. The horns there talk of authority. So for every horn, there is an eye connected to it. Seven horns, seven eyes. If you have only two eyes, two dimensions of revelation, you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation. Seven horns, seven eyes. Seven horns, seven eyes. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord was speaking to Moses, commanding him now. He says, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. 
in genuine pursuit for spiritual power I began to explore the materials of people that I thought I saw the workings of the spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree and I started searching reading through their books and reading through their stories all that I was looking for were patterns listen every time you study the lives or the works of great people don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns the power is not in the story the power is not in the parable that's why Jesus would give parables but hidden within those parables were patterns those who heard it just went back nodding their heads they had been enlightened in terms of you know from a, a, a literary standpoint but the disciples will come and say what is the hidden meaning of this and jesus will begin to explain the sower is this the seed is the word of god and so on and so forth you have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory let me repeat myself again that you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material the pattern that reveals that glory i remember years ago watching benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of god upon his life miracles signs and wonders i would watch reinhard bonke of blessed memory i would watch um Billy Graham minister in his crusades and he would just come up the stage just casually and for the next one hour you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen the intelligence the his presentation of the gospel was so compelling you would watch the people and, and those days at, at, at least as far as I watched you didn't have instruments playing like you know the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do there would be pin drop silence and while he's talking you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call you would see people get up just walk like something was pushing them i said what kind of grace is this he did not seem to perform many miracles as i know and as i saw but my goodness the compelling power of the gospel and i said i desire this grace show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland or our Roberts. They spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man, to match the wealth of nations. It looked like they were joking except that their lives proved it. You study the story of Aura Roberts, now the university stands as a monument, an eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth. You would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it. I said, no, this glory must have a pattern behind it. Don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer. You must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found. I watch men like R.W. Shambach these were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power. You study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you would hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? men who trivialized the healing they they brought mastery to the healing ministry they brought they brought a scientific components to healing they would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play the things that are written about for time the bible says they are written for our learning I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, 
pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings and his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, I watched Benny Hinn, my dad those days used to get, you know, the, 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 the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire, that fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. Ah. These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing. And yet I watched, respectfully speaking, other people and you would see the energy being dissipated, begging God to move. The moment the axe head is blunt, be ready to dissipate energy without results. Hallelujah. And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people. You will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education. But my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life, dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Can I tell you, every dimension of glory that seems missing in the body of Christ is not missing. Because the glory is a reaction. It is that we need to trust God for grace to find the patterns. There are patterns. Can a man prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity? Yes. But have we not tried and tried and tried and it did not work? And you know, we have, respectfully speaking, anybody who catches whatever small, at least they share the little that they know. But let me tell you, there has to be a higher dimension of revelation, a body of truth that is now organized. Are we together? Many people have done it in the personal development industry. Many have done it in the secular. We have books. They have been able to use statistics to study success, different dimensions of success. In fact, just to talk a bit on that, when you, when you study the story, many of you would know him now in, um, as we know in the business world or in the world of leadership generally. You hear about a mysterious name called Napoleon Hill. That man was a prodigy of Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Carnegie together with some of the world's successful people at that time Andrew Carnegie called him history would tell us and told him that there are many people dying the wealthy people were dying with fire in their bones and not sharing their secrets and nobody has been able to compress the things that they knew that brought their results and he mandated Napoleon Hill what the book that you know you know, some of his books and materials where they were the end product of his personal research. He was given letters of introduction to go to everybody in the then world who had attained a commendable level of success and to interview them then to piece together the principles that produce an excelling life. That's what brought books like Think and Grow Rich and a number of his other books that today have built many conglomerates across the globe. There is no respectable leadership institute, financial institution that does not pay honor and respect to these materials. 
And a few people like Robert Slerden now alive and other great people, they, they, they were able to piece together a number of their materials. But I submit to you, the body of Christ needs to come to a higher level. We need to be able to distill these factors with precision and add intelligence to it. If we intend for these dimensions of possibilities to be widespread across the body, it does not have to be shielded like a cult. What does it take to live a long life? What does it take to be prosperous? What does it take to dislodge the entities of darkness that, try the, that tie the destinies of men down? What does it take to rise to a position of influence? This is why the Lord gave us teaching priests according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we together? Yes. So taking actions in ignorance will not produce the outcomes that we desire. I've had the honor of meeting a few great people, extremely great people, especially in ministry and in the supernatural. And where I have the opportunity to probe into their results, I just ask them politely, could you share with me? What did God show you? Others just say generally, they may just say the grace of God or the mercy of God. But sometimes you need to respectfully probe into the dynamics. What is it that you always do that makes God show up when you call him? What is it that makes that help is always at the corridors of your life that you never seem to lack help, both material and human? Did you not know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are patterns connected to this thing? What pattern was Noah given that made the animals to leave the bush and with orderliness, they started walking their way to the ark? If you know that pattern, it will draw customers to your shop. If you know that pattern, it will draw members to your church. Noah did not imagine Noah going through the burden of shouting around. No. Every manifestation of the glory, let me repeat, has a spiritual pattern connected to it. You can jump, you can shout, but if it's not the pattern, you will not see the glory. Hallelujah. I remember when I began to see the healing anointing working in my life. It was almost like magic. In fact, quite frankly, I thought the people who were testifying were just doing it because they didn't want me to feel bad. Maybe they were tired and they appreciated my labor and wanted to console me by saying they were fine. And even as it is now, we are still toddlers relative to the dimension that God intends we step into. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean roar, to the King of Kings. We will praise Adonai, from the rising of the sun, Till the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. Men will sing that song because of your life. That you, you will be a man, the walking glory of God. That when people want to learn God, they say, look what God has done with a life such a manifestation not not onto competition listen look god can walk through a man that that man becomes a salmon that as a man of god if you are looking for a salmon god brings the image of that man and a topic comes out from any aspect of his life i and the children that the lord has given me he says we are for signs 
It didn't say we will produce signs that we become men to be wondered at, like the Bible says, that people will say, how, what did God do with a man to produce these kinds of results? Let your light so shine, it says, before men. This is one of the things that we hope that God will do through our lives this week in UK. My goodness, it will be, it will be a dramatic manifestation of the grace and the power of God. We say it because our confidence, our sufficiency is not in ourselves. But I've told you, if you found a pattern, it will work anywhere. Hmm. Listen, a chef will do well in Abuja. He will do well in a kitchen in Florida. He will do well somewhere in the Caribbean. It does not matter. The location regardless once there is an opportunity to live out the pattern the healing anointing will work in nigeria it will work in us it will work in uk it will work in the middle east the name of the lord that you know and know how to use it will work in nigeria it will work everywhere elijah could stand upon the confidence of these patterns and he said send a man to me and let him know there is a prophet in israel how could a man speak like that it was the same elijah who said cry unto baal have you forgotten the pattern to call down fire listen the men in the bible that you call supernatural were simply custodians of patterns it looked like they were custodians of power but i am telling you the power resides in the patterns it is more sustainable to be a custodian of patterns than a custodian of power you can get power through impartation you don't get patterns through impartation patterns come as a product of revelation but when you find it listen the men that we think in the body of christ are arrogant they are not arrogant it is the intoxicating power when you find patterns so fathers like bishop oyedeko will tell you that they rolled and say yeah i can never be poor again and you see people can misunderstand them but it is the truth our father in the lord baba deboy will say god told me there is someone here that in two weeks your life will change and you hear people shouting amen he is not just speaking english he is speaking on the strength of patterns elisha said by this time tomorrow when your life becomes a sign and a wonder it becomes an epistle this is the point the results that emanate from your life should not create competition or to look down on people demean and downplay people no you would have lost the purpose it's supposed to compel people that someone who is lazy with his prayer life by the time he sees certain dimensions of possibilities through your life it will activate that fire again hallelujah every time i watch this man this is what happened to me i said there has to be something benny hin would sing songs like for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you're the lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you're the lamb upon the throne And then you will see manifestations of the spirit amazing things I watch the videos of this man and and in my spirit my cry was oh God revive us again when the devil wants a generation to lose the glory of God all he needs to do is to look for the few people who have the patterns left and kill them or make the territory persecute them and through that act of dishonor they close the door for continuity hallelujah thine the glory 
Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us You've heard my story. I told you that one time I was listening to Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN 700 Club, and very gentle but powerful man of God. I mean, they had a widespread grace for the word of knowledge in that ministry. Almost every one of the staff that I know, you know, operates in that grace. And one day I heard the man speaking and he said, as a young minister, when he was about to start ministry, that he prayed and he cried that God will give him three things. Number one, if I recall, he prayed that God would give him wisdom. Number two, he prayed that God would grant him favor. Number three, he prayed that God would grant him the anointing of the spirit. I said, this is it. I can see the glory in your life that reflects that those patterns have been kept. I went back in the place of prayer and many other instances happened. I prayed for favor for one month. It was a February of that year from start to finish. I said, Lord, this is not something that came by default, but I have studied from the end of my destiny. You have shown me and as far as I saw at the time, I said, if I did not have the favor of God working in my life, I may not be able to do my assignment effectively. And I went to study the patterns that command favor. When I found it, I said, this is it. Nothing showed at that time that it was found. But hallelujah to Jesus, when you find it, it speaks. Man of God, listen to me. Probably your prayer group or your ministry somewhere right now is struggling in a particular area. This message is an assignment, it's a call to go back. Listen, do you know, believers study, but we don't study patterns. We don't even know what we are looking for, so we don't even know when we found it. We just study and say, wow, anything that excites us. No, you don't do that. You isolate an area where you need to see the glory of God manifest. Then, for starters, you pray for guidance in the, in the spirit. And then you search for men and women who exemplify that dimension. And now, don't just get excited by the results. Here is what most people do. They hang around people with results and think hanging around is what produces the results. You see that now? Just because you snap with an anointed man does not make you anointed. You only implicate yourself for your destruction because you will now be elevated to platforms you don't have the grace to defend. And with shame, you will be reduced back to where you rightfully belong. Whenever you have access to men who have this result, your proximity should be an opportunity to do whatever it is scripturally within your means to get them to open you up to the patterns. Listen. When God gives you unusual access to great people, you would be unwise if all you do is celebrate the leverage. It is no leverage until the patterns are revealed to you. Learn this. Many of you have served great men of God. Many of you have served billionaires. Many of you served senators. And all you have are their photos. All you have are physical gifts they gave you. You didn't do well. Sir, what took you from a local government chairman to a senator that regardless the antagonisms and without bribing you still remain show me a pattern and the man will tell you it started from my grandmother one day i took a cup of water to mama and she said kneel down she said i did not do well but i lay my hands upon you and i elevate you to be higher than me oh that is it see let me repeat it one more time please listen to me results do not happen by luck results are exact engagings or engagements of patterns the purpose of scripture is that you have access to these patterns scattered through scripture are patterns that correspond to various dimensions of the glory of god if you have found some Others have found quite some. 
but God is still counting on many who will find all for instance raising the dead is still a mystery across the body of Christ do you know that I believe that there are times we will find these patterns and it will become as frequent as healing headaches is that true now you see sicknesses and diseases as much as we desire with all our hearts to see people healed it grieves my heart when I see people who were prayed for and did not get the kind of healing they desired. But th there were times in the Bible when the Bible would say Jesus healed them all. The disciples thought it was just by laying on of hands. They went to drag that epileptic patient, you remember? And they embarrassed themselves there. Nothing happened and they came to Jesus. They said, listen, we're frustrated. Why couldn't this happen? And Jesus told them, because of your own belief, this kind goeth not but by this and that and that. And Peter kept following. A time came when the shadow of Peter. You can see growth, measurable growth. The Bible says God wrought special miracles, Act 19, Acts chapter 19, by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from him were put upon the sick. Come on now. The ways of God is the secret that this generation needs. Listen, we have had sermons, wonderful sermons, commendably so. We have heard songs. We have heard recitations. But it's time for a, a, a manifestation, an accurate communication of provable patterns. Patterns whose glory you can relate with so that we don't build on rubbles and shadows celebrating supposed remas that don't seem to have corresponding levels of glory because hear me the world that is coming in the next 10 years is not this world that you know it will be a world of precision and proofs let me repeat to you prophetically that the world that is that our civilization is evolving into are you seeing the level of accuracy that science is attaining onto with the manifestation of AI right now and all of these things, there is exactitude and precision. Even in medicine, except the church. Listen, revival is threefold. Number one, the individual. Number two, the body of Christ. Then number three, territories. We are still in phase one, where God is bringing an awakening to individuals. Because that's the pattern we see in the life of Gideon. The first thing that happened was a personal revival for Gideon. The Gideon pattern now. Then after Gideon was walked upon, he said, now go in this thy might. Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 of his men now came. And even among them, there was a pruning until they were left 300. And it was with those they went and defeated the Midianites. So the first thing God is doing is personal awakenings and revivals planting a hunger in people young and old from every nation and every territory and what a joy God has mandated Africa and even Nigeria every continent has sounded their shofar we're about to hear the shofar that comes from Nigeria and my goodness and Africa it will be loud and clear we may not export oil we may not export other technological products but we are exporting the spirit with power with proof we are exporting superior dimensions of the spirit we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh
is only a revived man that can cause revival. It is only a transformed man that can bring transformation. It says, such as I have, give I. So when we talk about awakenings and revivals, many of us are just thinking going to the nations. No, you go to the nations without miracle working power. You go to the nations broke and hungry and tired. No, allow that which you want to import to work in your life first. Then you will come with confidence. 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 The things we have seen, the things we have heard, it says that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach now you can stand and tell a generation we have not brought you cunningly devised fables hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching